Hi everyone, it's Lynn from The Stitch TV Show. Um, Pam did a video this week about Shop My Stash. And so I was like, uh, challenge accepted. So this is my Shop My Stash. And I was gonna show you how I create or kinda how I use fabric as my jumping off point to make stuff too. So these are both, well, I'm gonna do one first and then I'll record another one and it'll be later. So anyway, but um, what I wanted to show you was um, I did some table runners for my birthday, the party that I threw myself, because that's how I roll. Anyway, so I was going to show you what I did to create it, because it's kind of fresh and new, and also how I got there, like how I, you know, chose from my stash, because it all was stuff from my stash. I didn't shop. I think I bought one fabric, actually. And I'll show you which fabric I bought. But all the rest of it was from my stash. So I decided I was going to throw myself a birthday party and I needed some table runners. So in doing that, I was looking through my stash to try to decide, you know, what fabric would like be interesting to use as a table runner. And so this is the fabric that I chose. Um, this is like pieces of cake and cheesecake. And it's even got some cherry pie here. Um, but it's all this different pieces of cake fabric and I don't have very much left like I really kind of used a lot of this in um, In this project as well as some other things that I made so um, So this was my starting off point so you can see like there's this deep red. There's a little bit of um, pink in here There's some chocolate browns a lot of different browns are in this kind of thing, but it's really not like bright and colorful, which is kind of my jam. So, or my cup of tea, Pam says my jam, but it's really my cup of tea. So, and a lot of my projects are a lot of stuff I like are brights. Uh, so it was kind of outside of my box and how do I approach that? Well, the first thing I did is I went and found this burgundy or this red and I felt like that went well with um, the cherry pie kind of look, right? So that kind of matches that. So I started there. So now I have this fabric and I have this, um, this focus fabric, right? So this is my starting off point. So I'm like, okay, so what else can I put in here that goes with this? And I thought, well, some pinks would be good. And so I went to my stash and I pulled out a bunch of, these are reproduction double pinks. And that's how they were referred to in the 1800s. They've been printing these fabrics since the 1800s. They're very old um, style of prints or designs. Um, these are not old fabrics. These are fairly new, but these are not the old reproduction. But you can see this is a... Uh, what they call a double pink and it's a reproduction um, but what I like about this is that some of it has this little brown in it and there are a lot of um, reproduction quilters that do the double pink fabrics and they will do browns with the double pink fabrics and it's a very attractive look now it's kind of a more you know I don't want to say old-fashioned look but definitely a reproduction of 1800 types of quilts and not necessarily my jam. Um, I think if you see a lot of my quilts, they're very bright, you know, that kind of stuff. But I felt like these double pinks were definitely going to give me um, a look that goes well with this pink here. You know, you can see how they kind of go well with that pink as well as with the burgundy. So I've got burgundies and pinks. And I'm thinking, oh, okay, well, that's that's kind of, even though I can get some value change in my different pinks, because I didn't really want to have different reds. I could have gone with different reds, but I chose not to. Um, I was just going to stick with this one red. Um, and I was going to get some value change in some of my pinks. I, it wasn't enough for me. So I wanted another, you know, kind of what pops off. So even though this fabric has none of the next um, one that I'm getting ready to show you, I felt like, and this is the only fabric I bought, um, <clears throat> everything else came from my stash when I created this. This is the only fabric I bought. And I bought this blue teal, 
which I know you're thinking, hmm, that's kind of weird, Lynn. It doesn't work. But it does. And here's why it works. It works because it works with the pinks. So this teal looks good with this pink, <laughs> these pinks. So that's why I felt like I could get away with these two colors together, even though they're not necessarily a part of this focus fabric. Felt like this still, th this still looks good with this. And where I thought I could bridge the gap a little bit was using some of the browns. Um, but this gave me enough pop that I can have a distinction and get some hard edges. And I'm going to show you that in a second when I show you the, the quilt that I made, which is a table runner, but it's quilted. So it counts. There's three layers sewn together. It's a quilt. Um, so, but the reason I bought this fabric, I, one, it's got text on it. I love text fabric. But two, it's got like celebrating birthday and it's got you're invited to. So it was like all this text that had to do with celebrations. And so I was attracted to that because of the reason I was making these, um, these table runners was because for a party. The other thing that I ended up with in choosing was this red ticking. And the reason I like the red ticking is I love a good stripe. Um, I, I, I probably put stripes in a lot of my quilts. Um, I find myself attracted to and buying lots of stripes. I like how I can use the stripe to frame things. And, and you'll definitely see that in this, um, in this table runner that I did. But for me, and I'm not Pam, because Pam will look at how much fabric she has and determine whether she has enough to do it. I, I'm not there. I kind of wing it and let's see what happens. And if I get myself into a corner, you're going to figure, it's a chance to figure yourself out of the corner. So what I decided to do is I was going to make some, I was teaching a, a beginner's class and we were doing um, stars. So I decided to make some stars and we were doing quarter square triangles in the class. So I was teaching them how to do a quarter square triangle. And you know, this is a, a basic, you know, a uh, block that you've seen a lot. Um, I want to say it's the Ohio star. I'm pretty sure it is, but this is a square and a square essentially, which is made up of, of four quarter square triangles with the blue, being, you know, kind of my points of my star. And what I did was, is I went back and I got the, a brown that I felt like worked with the blue and see how that kind of looks good together, that blue and brown look good together. And then I felt like I got a nice, um, the brown looks good with the, the red. So the brown kind of tied everything together for me, even though this was my jumping off point. I was able to pull in the blue and it gave me some bright pops. And you'll notice how I made two stars and this is just one side of the table runner. But I also used in here, see notice I used my stripe to frame it. And I think you can see how I got a really nice edge. And what I mean by that is there's not a confusion of where this fabric starts and stops and where this fabric starts and stops. It's a, it's a clean edge. So that gives me this nice little pop, which gives me more depth, which also gives me um, value change. This is a lighter value than the brown and the burgundy is, right? So you can see how the cute little nine patches have the pink and the blue in them, but how I use the blue to give me kind of a little stripe, you know, it gives me a little detail in it. And it has your, the blue is what is causing your eye to move around the quilt, right? So it's looking at how it moves around the quilt. And that's what that blue gave me, even though there's none of it in this fabric. There's absolutely no blue in it. But because the blue looks good with the pink and the blue looks good with the brown, I, I got away with it. And also used enough of it. And that's kind of one of my other tricks is if you use enough of that color, people are going to believe you meant to put it in there. It wasn't an accident. So for me, this wasn't an accident. So I'm going to show you this in three parts. So this is one side. And then I did a, I did a, um, a chalkboard drawing. And then this is the other side. And in the chalkboard drawing, I framed it. And notice how I used the stripes 
to frame it. So I use the stripes vertically and horizontally here. And then I also use the blue as a really small border here, which kind of framed that whole, um, it frames the, the chalkboard drawing that I did, right? And I think I have it upside down again, which makes no sense to you. So it says, life is uncertain, need to serve first. Um, but notice the other end of the quilt. So it has the blue is what I'm using to move your eye around the piece. And it's because it's unexpected. So it, there's an unexpected color. So that's kind of what I do when I shop my stash. Um, I did buy one fabric um, that I wanted to use in that. But my tip is when you shop your stash and when you're creating a quilt, maybe use an unexpected fabric because that can add interest. So be sure to like, share, and subscribe us. And this is my version of Shop My Stash. And we will see you later on The Stitch.